Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of prenuptials might be considered a quasi-contract. Yes. The unjust enrichment and quasi-contracts. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people would say, well, it would be very devious, kind of a trick, a scheme. Mm -hmm. If I talk to my uh, future wife, right, I said, well, let's get a prenup so that you can get half of my estate if we ever divorce, right? But let's go to Kosovo and get a marriage certificate from the United Nations because it's easier to do it that way. Yes. It would be the unjust enrichment to have her file for dissolution of marriage in Clallam County. Yeah. Present to the judge a prenuptial agreement where I'm worth uh, trillions. Yes. She gets half of it, approximately $500 billion. And then he says, I'm sorry, Mrs. Budnick, this prenuptial agreement is not enforceable because your marriage certificate's from the United Nations. <laughs> Wouldn't she be upset about that? <laughs> now, as many times as I mentioned that I didn't get notice of court hearings, yes, I didn't get the actual child support order or the residential time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know that she would say that it was unjust for me to enrich myself at her expense without her knowing, yes, that a United Nations marriage certificate is not enforceable as a, a legal valid form of marriage, yes, so as to be able to enforce that prenuptial agreement. Now, these quasi-contracts, yes, they, they are enforceable to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Let's say I went to sue in each and every oath of office in this nation for their actual estates as well as their assets. <laughs> And uh, they said, no, you can't. And I said, no, I can. Pooch. There's a contractual obligation to enforce the rights of American citizens. Poop. And then there's the societal harm that it causes when you don't. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, I put multiple lawsuits here in my own signature. Yes. Seems a little fuzzy. Maybe, didn't I? Maybe I got something on there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> To induce parties uh, to use optimal timing and contracts, transfers should be undone if no social harm has been caused. For example, fixing resources to projects that no longer have value. <laughs> if harm has been done, the problem is more complex. Yeah, It might be addressed by asking which of the parties is more efficiently situated to have prevented or insured against harm. <laughs> Posner and Rosenfeld, 1977. Mm. Now, of the parties named in the dissolution of marriage, yes, if, or I should say, since you didn't give me notice of court hearings, yeah, which of those two parties was more efficiently situated to have prevented mm -hmm, or insured against harm? I would say the petitioner. Yeah. She was the only one that was there, and since I didn't get any notice... <coughs> <coughs> Now, these quasi-contracts known as marriage licenses, marriage certificates, prenuptial agreements, you wouldn't say they're enforceable contracts. It's not like any individual has ever been married in the United States that had one of these multi-billion dollar prenups. Now, for whatever reason, okay, they no longer loved each other and they wanted to get a divorce and they motioned to superior court in whatever county they were living in. And the... Uh, Petitioner, yeah, he thought she shouldn't get notice of court hearings. Now, finally, restitution, yeah, something I've been mentioning as being available to myself is often granted in cases of broken contracts, <laughs> such as those to be unenforceable under the statute of frauds, Boone versus Co. Yes, yes. Or those that become impossible to perform through some intervening condition or statute. <laughs> Again, we face a case of incomplete divestiture of property. The parties uh, parted with their goods or services on assumption that they have proved to be invalid. If the court were to simply leave the parties where it finds them, the parties would have incentives to strategically and uneconomically delay the transfer of physical possession of resources involved in the contracting process. <laughs> Book art uh, and de Geist, uh -huh, 1995. <laughs> I'll put a picture of this on there. These quasi contracts known as marriage licenses and marriage certificates. <laughs> now, I've been wanting to sue the United States and their employees, right, 
for obstructing my restitution from each and every oath, badge, and attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, civil rights coordinators? Yes. School employees? Right. Mandatory reporters? Yes. 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 And then the individual National Guards of each and every state. Mm -hmm. Restitution is also granted in many cases to the breaching party to a contract restatement of restitution, 1937-CI-08B. <laughs> Now, this breach of contract where you have a duty to ensure that I get notice of court hearings right, so that I can be there as a party to the dissolution of marriage and I can tell the judge, well, we actually got married in Kosovo and our marriage certificates from the United Nations. Yes. And, of course, as a judge, it could be a total ooch, ooch, ooh, oh. breach of contract, mm -hmm. breach of duty, pooch violating quasi-contracts known as United Nations marriage certificates. Yes. And then the taking of my sons without any due process of law. Mm -hmm. Now, it is therefore justified by the general economic argument that favors expectation damages <laughs> and disfavors punitive damages, though I myself favor both kinds of damages when receiving them. <laughs> Uh, to avoid the high transaction costs, bargaining over the surpluses and the breach of the bilateral monopolist. <laughs> I like these damages because I'm going to get them. <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of them. And for every oath that said, no, oh, <laughs> we can enforce a prenuptial agreement when you have a marriage certificate issued from the United Nations. And <laughs> you don't have to go through the United Nations for a dissolution of marriage. They can... They can do it through the State Department. Now, you think of all the individuals that have prenups, yes, that had to use the actual executive branch of the United States of America to enforce those prenuptial agreements because of the dissolution of the United Nations. I'm going to want to know. State Department, Pompeo. Since you were the former director of CIA and now you got that better job working at the State Department, I just want to know all the disillusions of marriage that the United States State Department has dissolved that happen to have a prenuptial issue from a different nation that you yourself said 